It's the Daily Doug. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Daily Doug. Thanks for being with me today for another song reaction and breakdown. Y'all, I am excited about today's episode because we are going back to the band Rush. It has been way too long since I included a song by Rush on the channel, and we fixed that today. So a couple days ago, I reached out to my friend and I said, uh, uh, what song uh, by Rush should we do? He's a big fan of theirs. And he thought about it and he got back to me and he said, you should do The Garden by Rush. And so that's what we're going to do today. As I have uh, looked at this piece uh, a little bit in preparation for today, the music is by Getty Lee and Alex Lifeson. And as usual, the lyrics are by Neil Peart. And uh, this is the last song on the last studio album that Rush ever put out. Uh, it is called, uh, the album is called Clockwork Angels, and it was released in 2012. And I found some information on Rush's uh, website about this. It says this, though uh, 2112 and Hemispheres are often referred to as concept albums, Clockwork Angels is the band's only true concept album with a continuous theme from beginning to end. It, uh, it chronicles a young man's quest across a lavish and colorful world of steampunk and alchemy as he attempts to follow his dreams. The story features lost cities, pirates, anarchists, exotic carnival, and a rigid watchmaker who imposes precision on every aspect of daily life. Uh, so I'm skipping to the end, but I do really need to listen to the whole album, and maybe we'll do that on another uh, later episode. But for today, we're just doing The Garden. Um, Interestingly enough, Neil wrote some introductory little uh, paragraphs for each of the songs uh, on this album. And this is what he says in his lyrical intro. He says, long ago, I read a story from another timeline about a character named Candide. He also survived a harrowing series of misadventures and tragedies, then settled on a farm near Constantinople. Listening to a philosophical rant, Candide replied, that is all very well, but now we must tend our garden. I have now arrived at that point in my own story. There is a metaphorical garden in the acts and attitudes of a person's life, and the treasures of that garden are love and respect. I have come to realize that the gathering of love and respect from others and for myself has been the real quest of my life. And then he just finishes it in, in quotes. Now we must tend our garden. And I'm just blown away by the brilliance and the humanity of all of this. And I can't wait to hear what the music and the lyrics and everything together are going to sound like. My computer went to sleep, so I need to get it back up and going here. We're still going on the screen capture. No, we're not. Let's try that again, shall we? Uh, that's how I do this. We're, we're playing uh, YouTube and uh, we're going to screen capture this as we go. And I think that that did it. Did I do it right? I did. So, y'all, we have waited too long. Let us uh, look at Rush uh, from their Clockwork Angels tour. This is a live recording, I think from Dallas. Um, and this is their song, The Garden. Here we go. Boy, their visuals are always wonderful, aren't they? Lovely string section. In this one of many possible worlds, I'll fall the best or some bizarre test. There it is. It is what it is. Seven. Ah. Mm. 
measure of a life is a measure of love and respect. Awesome. G. It's almost like F augmented for a second with the C sharp in there. That's what it sounded like. Even for a song that's a little more pop, it still sounds like Rush. This is wonderful. Major seventh. E natural now. They've been consistently using E flats, even though they've been in F. I highlighted this section of the lyrics. I put it in bold because I didn't want to forget it. I think it's everything that this band and these humans stand for, and it makes me love them even more. The future disappears into memory with only a moment between. Forever dwells in that moment. Hope is what remains to be seen. I think that's some of the most brilliant little lyric <laughs> set of lyrics that I've ever come across. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. I almost want to listen to it again. Let's, let's, let's return back to this little section, shall we? So it's the first time in the whole piece that they switch to F major seven. Opens up the hopefulness, the looking forward. All over a static F chord. Yeah. Okay, solo section, F major. I think minor five seven.
there's ever something to repeat continuously, it's this. In the fullness of time, a garden to nurture and protect. That's our calling, to nurture our own garden. If I wasn't sweating so much because I had to turn the climate controls off in here, I'd play it again <laughs> and just keep having some fun. Um, I don't, there's just not a band like Rush. There's just not, isn't it? Uh, it's wonderful. Just wonderful. I, I, I don't have words. Uh, even as it begins, in this one of po many possible worlds, all for the best or some bizarre test. It is, what it, it is what it is and whatever, time is still the infinite jest, isn't it? It's just we're, we're dealing with time and our time is limited. And at that point, I think Neil knew it. And, and it's all the more poignant now that, that he's no longer with us, right? Um, powerful, powerful art and music and song and example for the rest of us. Uh, that spurred me with a little bit of hope for today, and I'll hope to parlay that into the days to come. Uh, thanks to everybody for being with me today and for experiencing this with me. I hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. And uh, we'll see you again for more episodes. But for today, that's all. And we will see you again next time on another edition of The Daily Doug. <laughs>